Hey y'all. Imagine this. I get a FaceTime call. And I get asked the question, do you believe in unconditional love? I am speechless. <laughs> if you've been learning that I am not speechless very often, okay? So I know when to stop talking and let other people talk, but I'm not speechless very often. So I'm speechless. My face is scrunched up. I'm like just at a loss for words. I'm looking around I'm like, you know what? Do I? Do I believe in unconditional love? You know what I'm saying? So I stumbled on my words because is unconditional love possible? Let's see. Is she on? She's on. <clears throat> I ain't did this in a minute. Oh gosh. Hi guys! Girlies or whatever you identify as. And remember before we get the video started because I almost forgot, go ahead and comment how your mental health is doing. Typically we do three words. Stop, 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 comment below. If not three words, you don't have three, just give me something. Let me know what your current mental health is before you get into the video. Thank you. Welcome or welcome back. If I'm not your best friend by now, we'll be by the end of this video. Today we're gonna talk about unconditional love. I'm gonna throw a story time in there somewhere, I'm sure, but I wanted to talk about this because after that FaceTime call, I really had to think about it. Like we were talking, I'm like, is it? Is it just with your children? Is it with uh, people? What does it mean? I'm just started thinking about how society views unconditional love and things like that. So I have two people in my life who are going through very similar situations. When I say similar, I mean very similar. They're both dealing with somebody that they used to deal with and they were dealing with some mental health stuff, the person that they were dealing with. They're in eerily similar situations, right? And so, and then they're using that unconditional love in two completely different ways. One is bound by it, like I can't let go, like unconditional love is I'm here no matter what. And then on the other hand, the other one let go in the name of love. So. That's where it came from. Yeah, let's get into the video. All right, that seems like I'm looking at my phone, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna kind of break it down. The situations are pretty much I have one friend and I have another. And they're both dealing with somebody that deal with mental illness and things like that, but they're both dealing with people who are not necessarily taking the steps that they need to help themselves. And so the one friend that's bound by unconditional love, she's taking it even if it's hurting her. She's taking everything that comes with it if there's any manipulation involved if there's any just anything involved and she's more on the side of therapist she's more on the side of that's what she wants to do and stuff she's more on the side of fixing not wanting to leave people out to dry not wanting to just abandon people quote unquote and probably because of things that she's been through as well that's kind of her heart so on that hand that's where she's using unconditional love on the other hand unconditional love is she's accepting them where they are for who they are without judgment from a distance because it is starting to leak on her life and harm her and she's using unconditional love in a way to say hey you gotta help yourself i can't allow you to damage me and she just loves from a safe distance so by those two, you can kind of see like one again is bound by love. The other one is more like using unconditional love as a, I'm loving myself. It's freeing. I'm letting you go. I'm putting you at a distance. And that's unconditional love by probably not enabling, keeping them accountable, things like that. But we'll get into that. So that's that. Now, because this is a topic that I feel like has so many different answers, I feel like it's a topic that people often try to figure out, it's kind of philosophical. I went ahead and reached out to different people in my life, some super close, some friends, family, men, women, and I wanted to go ahead and show my responses. So I'm going to place them up and we're gonna go over them and see what is unconditional love to other people. First, we're gonna put up what the person I said is bound by unconditional love, their response. So the question is, what does unconditional love mean to you? They say, unconditional love is a type of love that's very rare to find. I feel like it's something close to the love God has for us. I'm not really sure if it's possible in actual relationships. I feel like family, like kids, and maybe your parents can have unconditional love. You would have to really go through some stuff with your partner to know if they love you unconditionally. Like people that have been married 40 plus years probably have that. Okay, so I'm gonna comment in between 
between these two. So with that, I think we can kind of decode it. It's rare to find. That's possible. I'm not sure, but I really want to touch more on you really would have to go through some stuff with your partner to know if they love you unconditionally. And that applies for people that are like 40 plus years in. So me personally with this, I think that that is something that people view when, when it's unconditional love. It's like that ride or die, like having to really go through stuff. Like, do you love me unconditionally? And the thing that kind of trips me up about that is, hmm, how do I explain this? It's like, okay, if it's not in my character to be malicious and mean and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be that hard for the person to love me, right? Now, if I have a mean streak and I'm malicious and stuff like that, what they're saying is you have to kind of go through that and see and see if that person still loves you, right? That's kind of what I got from it. Then we go to the other person that I said was more like they accept the person for who they are, where they're at, but if it doesn't work for them, you know what I'm saying? They keep a safe distance. That is how they show unconditional love. So this person is also a female or woman. And she's saying, in my opinion, unconditional love, generally speaking, means to still love something or someone no matter what they do. No matter how well they do or how short they fall, in the eyes of a person, they will be loved regardless. Speaking for myself, unconditional love means to love a person no matter what, but the love may change due to certain conditions because I am a human and not God. So I like that too. So she kind of separated it and said, generally speaking, then what it means directly to her. And for her, what it means directly to her, um, where she says unconditional love means to love a person no matter what, but the love may change due to certain conditions because I am human, not God. Now, I want to pause there and pose the question. If the love changes, does that still make it unconditional love? Is unconditional love, I love you the same way, the same amount, the same intensity, no matter what, or is it just overall, I just love you? Even if I love you less you get what I'm saying so that was kind of seemed like a measurement when it when it comes to love okay I'm gonna call my daughter hello hey girl huh how are you good okay I got a question what you say I have a question okay what's the question what does unconditional love mean to you that a person will love somebody no matter what okay Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna record this video, I'll call you back. Love you. Okay, bye. Bye. That's coming from an eight year old, okay? That's her simple answer. Next, my madre. It means loving someone without strings attached. It's like saying I love you no matter what, but at the same time, it doesn't mean allowing someone to walk all over you. You can love someone, but not have them in your life. Now, that's the side I lean on. And it's like, is it conditional until something happens and then there has to be conditions? When do you decide, like, I'm going to love somebody unconditionally, you know what I'm saying? But this, I actually agree with. And I think that what happens is people equate unconditional love with a person still having access to you. And I don't think those two things are synonymous. I think that you can love somebody from a distance. You can love somebody and not ever speak to them again. So it's like, does it change because of the way the love is now given? But I believe that too. Like, you don't have to have somebody in your life to love them. Sometimes, depending on what they do or what happens, I feel like in order to still maintain that love for a person, sometimes you have to remove them out of your life. It's like me, like with the two situations I was telling you at the beginning, if I'm understanding that it's something going on with your mental health, I'm understanding you're not in the place that you want to heal or work or unpack your childhood trauma go to therapy and stuff I can't force that on you but I can say hey you're not making any steps toward helping yourself and because of that because I must protect myself I can no longer be in direct contact with you and that's whether I'm limiting it or whether I'm just completely shutting it out and we may speak again we may not I don't know but I feel like that's a form of love too also sometimes in those situations you can become enabling if you're doing all these things for a person or you're constantly there and all that stuff, sometimes access, can, to me, sometimes access can be enabling in itself. That's like to me with certain toxic relationships, like you think that you're forgiving, but you're teaching this person that it's okay to treat you a certain way. Some people will see things and be like, okay, I should not have done that. Let me fix it. But we see oftentimes when you let people get away with certain things, they don't say, okay, come to my own. It was wrong. That's it. That's why sometimes leaving the relationship is a form of love. It's a form of love for yourself and it's a form of love for for the other person because it may push them into growth it may not but it could so I definitely I 
and most on this side where you don't love them with a strings attached. That's how I love. I feel like at this particular space in my life, I have a way that I want to love people. It's not really contingent on what you do. It's not like, oh, okay, you have to behave this certain way for me to love you. It is once I decide, okay, I care for this person. I love this person. I want to love a certain way, openly, freely, honestly, kindly. And if I feel like something's happening to where I cannot love that way, where I feel like I have to do tip for tip, I have to do this and I have to move like that, or we got to put certain strings on it and stuff like the way that I love is contingent on how much I have to give how much I have to offer now I may cut off access I, I feel like my baseline is I do love con unconditionally there's nothing like you have to win my love if I'm, I choose to be in relationship with you intimate any way you know what I'm saying I feel like I love the same I think I may have a deeper kind of love for certain people like my my daughter or something but all in all I love that way unconditional like you don't have to buy me a bunch of stuff and it's like oh, okay I love you you don't have to do things a certain way and then I then I love you so that's a big part of unconditional to me so I love that my mom said that like I don't know if I agree I love you no no matter what because I am a person that feels like you can take love back <laughs> I don't know about no matter what I can probably think of very few instances where I would probably be like I can't love a person like that but we're gonna go my stepdad said it means until death do us part there is no condition to make you leave so that sounds like marriage that sounds like that 40 plus year thing that i said the first person said but i was like is that serious are you being serious but he kind of just said it's what i'm doing right now so the way that he loves my mother is unconditional love so that's more i don't really know you have to kind of witness their relationship to see what that's like but <clears throat> that's that and that's come from man he has a catholic background and they are 40s 50s in those ages i actually asked somebody i was kind of talking to and i actually asked them over the phone and they said i don't know i'm unfamiliar with it so you have some people on that spectrum so that's coming from somebody around my age dating wise they don't have children i don't want yeah i don't believe they have a relationship with their father i don't think they have a great relationship with their mother either i'm just trying to kind of help y'all figure it out but they definitely said i don't know i'm unfamiliar with it. my grandmother said you'll do anything for family that's the so it seems like her unconditional love means like you can do that for family and i didn't want to dig super deep i wanted to get very basic answers so hers was you'll do anything for family so unconditional love and that response to me is to family don't seem like something you do with significant others and things like that this last one I'm going to end up telling y'all a story time where I feel like I have experienced unconditional love. And it is a, it's a beautiful thing. So this is going to be from the person I actually have had experience with unconditional love with. And they said, and somebody that's a forever friend. Their response was, the world changes and so do people, whether it be financially, health-wise, family issues, or even mental. But that, for some people, doesn't determine if they will continue to love you in the same manner, unconditionally, in my opinion. So it seems like they're more like, I love you through whatever. Through whatever changes and things like that I can still love you in the same way so it's about in what manner I love is what makes it unconditional it seems like in that response I'm gonna move on now and we're gonna get into the story time the story time this is gonna be where I experienced unconditional love and I feel like this experience was big on why my heart is still open why my heart has never hardened why I believe in and know that there are good men and good men really exist good people really exist and to me this is unconditional love so here we go when I moved if you don't know I feel like I don't know, whatever when I moved to Georgia from Michigan because of my um, deep relationship. I have spoken about this before, you know, had trouble with PTSD and nightmares, and I have a video about self-soothing with like alcohol and things like that. I had a friend and he, I need to make sure I make it through a video without crying. He was a godsend. So we didn't plan on like dating or falling in love, none of that stuff. It was strictly just friendship. I didn't think I was gonna talk to this person again. You might notice if you watch other story times, but I didn't plan on actually building a relationship with them. And they were so good with handling me. And I don't know why or I kind of do like when I talk to him, the way that he still talks to me and uplifts me and the way that he upholds me, I don't know if it was just he could see the heart of me the nature of me and see through a lot of my lashing out from my my ptsd and trauma if he could see through a lot of things that i was going through but the way that he would handle me 
actually made me realize the things that I was doing. The way in which my trauma could have been harming the people around me, the way that I could have just been lashing out. You know, putting people in uncomfortable positions as far as my behavior and that relationship made me work harder in my healing. It made me when I didn't like one therapist, I got another one. It made me go hard with losing weight. They would like sit on the phone with me and we would go to the gym together. They would help me talk through stuff. We talked about God, we prayed. I hadn't claimed the actual religion, but they grew up um, Jehovah Witness and things like that. And even then we were still able to merge together as somebody that can be impulsive or was impulsive and was like, oh my gosh, and emotionally not super stable and stuff. To come across somebody that's so mild mannered, didn't curse, was so didn't never curse at me, never raised their voice at me, was very respectful. It was a couple of times where I think that you know they've had to say something to me, but they've always handled me so tenderly. It was like it was like after coming out of something like dv and things like that so you're scared i've never really like closed off and been like i don't want to love nobody no more i don't want to i've never done that but it just opened my eyes it was just simple it was just we met we talked we clicked they helped me spiritually they helped me emotionally they helped me mentally and i was able to do the same for them like we could question each other like we complimented each other very well like i'm very like okay you believe in this certain thing why you know and they were going through their own thing with that and vice versa like we just really helped each other not on purpose like it wasn't on purpose it wasn't like i need you help me do this and that we could definitely do that but that's not what it was it was simply just us being ourselves and i feel like that's unconditional love to me i was going through the motions highs lows being myself the lash outs and stuff and i think because they love me properly i never looked at it as you just let me do anything you letting me walk all over you like ever, ever. And I don't know if it's because they always respected me. No matter what I did, their integrity never changed. Whatever I did, their character never changed. They were them through and through. And the way that they loved me, if anything, it deepened. It never changed. They never made me feel like a victim. They never made me feel less than. Like they hold me so highly. They could literally see you are affected this way because of the things that you've been through but you're an amazing person like they got to see me really like get through certain things I mean, we talk about it to this day i just i don't want to cry in this video they love me through every alcohol related incident they love me through every outburst they love me through going through stuff with my weight the type of love that they gave me it gave me confidence one it reassured me that i wasn't broken just being honest and two it helped me love myself and it helped me love myself because it was like this amazing mild man they're like beautiful person loves me and with that it was like although I feel like my heart and stuff is in the right place and I deserve it they also deserve the best version of me as a friend because that's how it started off and so I just started going hard and working on myself it was a kind of love that inspires you and pushes you to be better it's such an amazing experience I was like later on we ended up like trying to do the romance thing but even after that it's such a love that and I feel this way about people in general, but it's such a love with them where I want them to get married, have kids, all this stuff. I would be extremely ecstatic and vice versa. Like, I really want the best for you. That's a person that I want you to have the best quality. You deserve the best quality of life. And I feel like they feel like that with me too. So to me, that was unconditional love, but also the way in which they handled me. They didn't meet fire with fire. They never, like, they never spazzed out on me, yelled at me, like, was disrespectful. They were pretty patient with me and everything. So I think sometimes it's also in the person, depending on the kind of person you're dealing with. So like I said, they weren't a pushover, but I also don't just walk over people. I don't take advantage of people in that that way it was almost like they broke down my defenses because had they turned up with me I probably would have been like see this is how people are although respectfully if I turn up on you you turn up back or I say something you say something back or I act a certain way and you decide that you want to come there's so many times where I'm like they could literally stop talking to me because regardless of what I'm going through you have to protect yourself and they weren't really phased by it and then probably sometimes I could ask them 
but they still love me like it's somebody i can call and vice versa like you have an issue with anything i can call them in the past if i ever felt like i was about to walk off the cliff i literally don't have to i don't have to sugarcoat anything like it's such a freeing feeling but i also want to do right by them it's not like i'm gonna keep doing stuff because i know you're gonna always love me i actually am like no i'm gonna be the best version of myself i'm gonna give the best version of myself so that you find the value in staying i actually don't feel like i can never lose them i do feel like there is something that probably could make me I don't want to find out that's the thing especially not after they've given given me so much grace so I feel like I've definitely experienced unconditional love and I can say that because of the outcomes because I look at love in such a profound way I look at love even after I've been in relationships after that that haven't turned out right when you experience that type of love and friendship and then you experience it experience it in a romantic relationship and you know that it's possible hope is always there when it comes to dating and stuff I also feel like it's not something that everybody gets to experience in that way in a healthy manner not like unconditional i'm dogging you out disrespecting you and you're staying that has never happened in our in our friendship or in our relationship and so to experience it in such a healthy way and it be such a watering experience and for somebody that felt like at that moment they were broken to be able to actually water another person it's the most beautiful thing to the point where i'd be okay one i don't settle in any way friendship they set a bar as to how love goes how you should be treated and things like that and i'm like so grateful for that like i'm so grateful for that that i'd always tell myself like if i never get a certain type of love if i never experience that again i'm okay because i experienced that to experience that kind of love once and i still get it from them we're still very close but if i never experience that on a the romantic level again i'm okay i'm really okay because it's just certain things in life where god makes a point makes a marker because like i said there are some people that never get to experience that and never will it usually ends up unhealthy or something never will i'm so grateful for that so i've experienced unconditional love it was beautiful it's a beautiful thing to experience and again for me it happened by mistake i wasn't searching it i wasn't like oh unconditional i never even asked do you love me unconditionally nothing like that it just happened it was in it it was in it it was shown i didn't even know what it was until I had time to reflect and was like, whoa, like, wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's not something I went and, and seeked out. Like I said, you'll go through things. And again, I pray a lot of y'all stuff. So I feel like God sends you things when you need it. And sometimes I do believe it comes in forms of people. It comes in forms of people, places, things. And that was just one of the, the many blessings and being able to really experience that really carved out a deep meaning for what love is. Now, I don't necessarily expect that out of every single person I encounter. Cause like I said, I do feel like that is kind of rare. And so I just got one of them and that's fine. I have a, a really deep kind of unconditional like love with another person. I have my daughter and stuff and another person in my life, but yeah, they were a marker. It was like, it wasn't even about romance. It's like, you're a marker for showing that, not that people should deal with your mess, not that people have to get bullied and bullied and bullied, but how transformational love can be. But that love gotta be in you. He had that love to give. That's how he loves too. So I think that's kind of a, a choice. Like you gotta choose the way that you love and stuff. And he wasn't gonna change himself to mirror me or mold to me or love me a certain way. We've had multiple different conversations within that time when I didn't understand the type of person he was because he is different from any type of person I've ever met. You know how you meet certain people and it's like, I've never met somebody like that. I've met a few people like that, that I can't say, oh, they're like that. I don't have, you know, a lot of two people are the same in my life in general, but he really showed me unconditional love. Even in the corrections, it was with such tenderness and such love. I don't know if I would have been aggressively just resistant to it, how that would have went, but I've always been myself. So even if I fumble over words, like he doesn't rush me because I've been in situations and relationships where people get frustrated because I'm a person where sometimes I can tell you like I need to just talk it out. I need to talk it through. I don't know exactly where I'm trying to get to, but I need to talk it through. Or sometimes I try to find the exact words to, to word things when I'm in a conversation with somebody because I'm very particular about words because words are very important. And he doesn't do that. It's like a space. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to worry. How do I look? How do I feel? How do I, I don't have to do any of that. And that is such a freeing and beautiful feeling because when you're working on yourself and you're healing through stuff you know you have insecurities you have doubt you have certain things and now I'm gonna be myself regardless 
of who I'm around. But in the moments I wasn't able to do that, it'll be a simple, hey, just say it. Like, don't think about the perfect words. Don't worry about offending me. I think it's his trust in me too that helped where it was like, I know that you're not trying to be nasty or malicious or nothing. Just say it. Just say it however you need to say it. Don't look for the perfect words because we can work this out. We can work through it. You don't got to do all the extra stuff with me. That makes me more careful with my word. That makes me so respectful. I don't disrespect a person or anything. It's just... It's little things, it's little things like take your time. If he hears me struggling to even just, like, I don't know how to say it, I don't know how to say it. He's like, just say it. Don't, there's no way to just say it. We'll figure out the rest as we go, kind of. And so for that, I'm actually extremely grateful. So that's my experience. I don't want to give too much in my take. I just wanted to kind of tell y'all what it felt like because it's an uplifting, spiritual, God-like love. It's like you have those connections. That's the kind of love that is. And I aspire, of course, to have that no matter what. I don't want to give too much of my input because I want y'all to talk to me about this topic and what y'all think and did y'all agree with a certain person's response and things like that. And I'm going to leave off on a question and that is, if love is not unconditional, when does it stop? I'll answer that. I feel like it stops when it becomes unhealthy. Unconditional love has a way of stopping when it becomes un unhealthy. However, some people say in very unhealthy situations, giving that unconditional love and just accepting it and things like that. I do agree with the sentiment of you can love somebody and they don't have access to you. Sometimes denying that very access is a declaration of love. However, that's the only input I'm going to put in. I want to hear you guys' thoughts and things in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a good old thumbs up because it helps me. Okay? Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know every time I post. And do all that good YouTube stuff that, you know, y'all know how to do. Remember that you create your own narrative. Until next time, bye best friends.